Uh, first of all, what do you make of the growing grassroots movement uh, against the South Korean deployment of STAD, uh, especially after President Moon Jae-in was sworn in? I think uh, this is uh, very natural and highly expected. I think there will be very few people in South Korea who want to risk the safety and the security of their own nation and their own country by the deployment of the THAAD missile system on their own soil, mainly because the employment, the deployment of THAAD in South Korea may turn uh, South Korea itself into a bigger target. And in any case of war or uh, missile attacks back and forth, mm. definitely not only the region where the THAAD system will be deployed, but South Korea as a whole may become a target both tactical as well as strategic target. Therefore, I think it's highly, highly natural for the Korean people in South Korea to oppose this. Uh, uh, James, is this just a regional protest or it represent some kind of a national change of mood uh, towards SAD? Um, I'm not so sure that uh, there's a real big change or shift in public opinion about um, that. Um, if you take a look at the latest polls um, that have come out within the past month, um, and also the exit poll uh, after the election, uh, we're seeing between 50 to 60 percent overall support uh, for the deployment of this capability. Mm -hmm. um, where there is some disagreement, uh, it is with uh, the local people uh, of Sungju. Uh, who uh, thought that or who feel uh, very much that the government did not um, engage in enough dialogue and debate about this particular issue before uh, moving ahead uh, with the decision. Uh, but again, uh, this is a relatively small country we're talking about uh, that is highly populated. Uh, it's going to be difficult um, no matter where you choose to uh, locate or place this um, uh, capability. Uh, people will have their opinions, and um, and it just happens to be that Korea is a democracy where this kind of debate uh, is is free to free to happen uh, on a day to day basis. O and, on the uh, latest development of this, their, um, James, very clear, why wasn't the President is, is Mu Jae-in in informed about the latest delivery of the launchers? Is there any miscommunication between South Koreans and, and Americans? What happened? Uh, well, President Moon uh, has, has stated that he wasn't informed about this, and so he's called in his uh, uh, Minister of Defense um, and the National Security Advisor uh, to provide more information on this. Uh, but the U.S. position on this has been always that uh, there's been complete transparency with the South Korean uh, government about this. Uh, now, there's some debate within South Korea about the process and the procedure uh, and the steps taken by the, the previous administration and their interim government um, as they moved ahead uh, with this decision. <coughs> Again, the four uh, extra launchers um, is doesn't, uh, the delivery of those launchers doesn't necessarily mean deployment. So there are some disagreements about exactly what kind of conversation actually occurred between Blue House um, and um, the Ministry of Defense about this matter. Uh, we'll, ha we'll see uh, in the coming days uh, after the investigation mm. uh, about exactly where the information uh, was lost or who miscommunicated and, and, and who, who made the errors here. And Sharon, uh, what do the government in the United States think about the change of tone from the South Korean uh, President Moon Jae-in about the deployment of that? Obviously, he has some doubts about the deployment. Now he raised questions about the fast delivery of launchers without his knowledge. Is Washington well, worried? Well, I think, yeah. no, I don't think so. Uh, there, there will be a summit. As a matter of fact, the special envoy uh, is arriving shortly. Um, I, I don't, <laughs> There, there's no real concern right now. These decisions, you know, this is not a secret program. This is, uh, you know, these decisions to deploy 
the system were made quite a while ago. It is totally understandable for President Moon to be w wanting to go slow, right? He didn't, you know, uh, Pakane was impeached. Um, he didn't have the usual transition time. He's getting <coughs> things sorted out. And so uh, while, you know, the protests are regrettable and, you know, it, I don't think anybody wants to see this become a, a, a political football, um, I think we're going to wait and see what happens mm. with the summit um, that's coming up. And hopefully, um, you know, both parties will agree that this is something sensible to do in light of the North Korean threat. I mean, South Korea is a, a target anyway of North Korean short range, you know, whether it's artillery, short range ballistic missiles, medium range ballistic missiles. Mm. Um, I, do not, uh, I do not believe that the deployment of the system m makes them a bigger but, target. But, but Victor, do you think President Moon will probably use the protests increasing levels of protest at Songju as a political reason to raise doubts about the deployment or at least postpone the dis deployment? No, first of all, there is no denying that tensions on the Korean Peninsula are very high and the situation is very dangerous and DPRK is taking actions which are in violation of the United Nations Security's uh, resolutions uh, and refusing to discontinue with its nuclear weapon as well as its launch vehicle. But on the other hand, deploying the THAAD missile is uh, uh, not constructive at all. It's actually making the whole situation even worse. And eventually, the consequence may be even worse than uh, without the THAAD missile. And it will make the eventual solution of the DPRK nuclear mm. weapon even more complicated and more difficult to achieve. If Let's just imagine if Russia is going to deploy the anti-missile system somewhere outside of the United States, either in Canada or in Mexico or in some of the Caribbean islands. But the question do you think is, uh, the United States but, will But the question out? is, do you think President Moon yes. will change his calculations about security assessment with indeed. the deployment of that? Yes, indeed. Uh, answering your question, I think, first of all, we need to give uh, President Moon more time because he's new in his position as the president. He need to get all the briefings. He need to get all the reports about the uh, ins and outs of this uh, uh, THAAD system. Secondly, I think President Moon need to make a strategic decision as to what exactly is the end game on the Korean Peninsula involving the DPRK threat in the nuclear weapon as well as in the launch vehicle threats. Mm. And what is the better way to deal with this threat? And I hope President Moon will realize that going through diplomatic channels, uh, increasing dialogue, uh, including with uh, DPRK, probably will be a better uh, strategy rather than piling up more and more weapons. And recently there was a film, a documentary film, uh, by director Emmanuel Munchil Park. The title is Blue Butterfly Effect, which basically zero in on Sonju's anti-THAAD movement. Uh, James, what do you make of such a documentary film and the impact it will have on the South Korean people's attitude towards uh, the THAAD deployment? So if you take a look at the public opinion trends on the THAAD deployment, um, after the fourth uh, nuclear test and the fifth nuclear test, the support for the deployment of this system uh, was at about 75 percent according to the Asan Institute for Policy Studies uh, own polling. Um, that number um, sort of came down to about 50 percent mm -hmm. um, or about 60 to 50 percent, between 50 to 60 percent before the impeachment process and the scandal. Once the scandal broke, um, the support for the THAAD um, even dropped further down below 50 percent to between 45 to 50 percent and until the election. So after the election, when we're taking a look at some of these, um, some of these polls again, again, um, it's gone back up to 60, 50 to 60 percent overall. So why, why the trend? Well, first of all, the, um, the lack of North Korean provocation coupled with the scandal and the Park Administration's decisions to move very quickly with the THAAD deployment um, raised mm. a lot of suspicion about 
whether the government was thinking uh, in South Korea's best interest. But after the election, um, you're seeing North Korea continuing to um, uh, fire um, missiles and um, threatening a six test. And frankly, I think the South Korean public sees this as a bigger threat mm. um, than uh, what that might do um, in turn so for South Korea. Mu Jin in they see South and his government, see, um, uh, before they were sworn in, they were the North Korean ambiguous threat, or rather, than, rather opposed to that deployment. After they were sworn into office, do they have second thoughts about their stance on that deployment, considering the increasing uh, frequencies of North Korea's uh, missile tests? I think the Moon administration found that, well, w w then candidate Moon and the progressives found that um, opposing the THAAD um, deployment would be a very difficult proposition, a political uh, mm -hmm. decision for the progressives, given the continuing provocation from North Korea. And so they've taken a different approach um, after the election. What they've said is that they support um, the Trump administration's policy of uh, coupling pressure with the possibility of engagement. But with North Korea continuing to move in a very you know, steady manner and continuing to develop their delivery capability uh, with the stated intent and the desire to have a long-range delivery mm. capability has made this um, a position very, very difficult for the Moon administrations uh -huh. to continue. And, and, and even maybe perhaps uh, unwillingly um, taking on the Trump administration's position that they would like to have more pressure on okay. North Korea. A and Sharon, and that if they're willing, uh, then there is possibly a engage. bigger picture. So that's I think this, is a, how this isn't a change of a position. President Moon weighed the, its relations with both the United States and China. China says it will not tolerate uh, South Korea uh, deploying THAAD. If it does not back down, China will continue its economic pressure. On the other hand, President Moon wants to have a closer relation with China, but also enjoying uh, its security alliance with the United States. How will President Moon balance the relationship with these countries? Well, that's a very good question. Um, we don't know. Uh, I think, you know, President Moon is more left-leaning, certainly, than uh, Park geun was. Um, the, the, the real question is, <laughs> you know, could South Korea ever rely on security assurances from China? Mm. Um, you know, China doesn't like these uh, American ballistic missile defense systems, right, uh, for a variety of reasons, whether you agree with that or not, right? But, uh, you know, it's concerned about U.S. influence in the region. It's concerned about the possibility of the radars in these systems uh, having um, an effect on China's strategic yeah. deterrent, right? I mean, we can argue the technical details and say, you know, when they're uh, when the radars are in engagement mode, that they're not looking at China, obviously. Uh, but you know, those those modes can be changed for those radars. Of course, it wouldn't be performing the function that you want it to perform in that case. But uh, what would what would China say if South Korea, which at one point thought about uh, deploying its own missile defense system, how would China feel about that? Um, yeah, right. You know, this is a balancing act that uh, the new Korean president is going to have to manage. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, when you look at President Trump, uh, it's really not clear. Uh, his own policy towards the region okay. and towards the North Korean threat is entirely unclear. So, so that is going that to be That will be even more complicated and very challenging. Thank you very right. much. We're running out of time. Thank you, Sharon, James, and Victor. Thank you.